Well, welcome to another edition, of course, of My Life in Football. And, uh, you know, today we are over the moon to be joined by somebody that uh, has got a smile from ear to ear because of what's happened recently for him and his, and his team, of course, Andy Wing. And Andy, we're, we're over the moon to uh, Abby with us. And, uh, and a congratulations to you and to, uh, to to Banbury. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cheers for, cheers for having me on. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. No, no, no problems at all. So, so I mean... Andy, as we normally start, me and Steve, you know, as you know, we start sort of, how did you sort of, the first question is always exactly the same. I mean, how, how did yourself get involved in, in football in the first place when you was a youngster? Um, uh, I, I, to be fair, I come from like a, a football family. Everyone's sort of mad Aston Villa fans. Uh, obviously, here in, up here in uh, Birmingham, where both sides of the family are really big, big Villa fans. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think my dad, at, I was about six years old, he, he sort of, was coaching a, a local team, um, and then I, you know, I played. I think I played for the under nines when I was about six years old. Um, yeah, obviously, really enjoyed it. Um, and then moved on to kind of there's a club called Arden Forest in um, in Birmingham. They're, they're quite well known around there as, as a, a, a big Sunday league um, football club. Um, you know, there's a lot of players. I mean, I think Lee Carsley and. Um, People like that I played, I played for and Ben Turner. You, um, there's quite, there's quite a lot uh, from his, from our, from our school. Gary Birch, um, Neil Davis, who played for Aston Villa. Um, so I went to a school called Cotchett Hill um, in Birmingham. And again, a lot of, a lot of those players have, have, have come, come from that school. Uh, had a really good footballing school. Played for Arden Forest as, a, as a, as a youngster. A trial at Birmingham City when I was about ten years old. Uh, I think it was a centre of excellence. They fa- uh, folded about uh, when I was about 10, 11. I bet the family was pleased about that then, weren't they? I know, yeah. <laughs> they were Villa fans. <laughs> luckily, luckily, they folded <laughs> at that time. So I didn't have a decision to make, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it was at a time I was just, yeah, playing for them. Obviously, uh, you know, a professional football club. It was great, obviously, when you're 10 years old. Um, uh, and then um, obviously, they folded. Then I went back, obviously, back to Iron Forest. I think I, I got seen uh, when about 12, 13 years old. Um, I think playing, you know, the five-a-side tournaments you get in the summer. Um, you know, played a lot of them and, and got scouts. We cut Derby County and Coventry City at the same time. Um, so, so you know, fair play to my, to my mum. She was, I think, our training at Derby Monday and Wednesday night. I had training at Coventry City on Tuesday and Thursday night and was doing that for quite a while, really. Um, you know, for for months, months. Um, I didn't get in at Derby, you know, which was quite glad, really. I didn't really enjoy it. You know, I was just going just because, um, you know, as a professional football club, you know, you know that's your dream. That's what, what you want to do. Um, but, and I, but I really like Coventry City. And luckily enough, um, you know, I obviously got got into Coventry about 12, 13 years old. Um, and then I stayed there. Had some great years as, as, as a young staff um, at Coventry City. Uh, then I got to 16 uh, and I got released as a 16 year old. It was, it, was, it was a bolt out of the blue. I didn't really uh, realize it to be fair. Um, you know, the late Peter Whittingham was, um, he sadly passed away, the old Cardiff City player. Actually, what a, what a player he was. He was in my same, uh, he, he was in my Coventry City team. Um, he went over to Aston Villa and his career went, you know, from, from, from there. Um, and I got, I got released at, at, the, at the time. And it was a bit of bolt out of the blue. I think they brought a lot of Irish lads, 10, 11 Irish lads um, over. There's some big clubs in Ireland, Ireland, Cherry Orchard, I don't know if you've heard of them, and a couple more. Um, you know, and there, there was only two or three English lads in, in that team. Um, you know, all these big Irish lads come over with um, a big contract, really. Uh, and we didn't get a look in. So obviously then, you know, you go away, sort of t- towel between your legs a little bit, back to school. Back to the district team, kind of on the bench on a Saturday because you know you've just come back and you've missed it for a few years. Um, went to went how to. Sorry, uh, Andy, how does that how does that affect your mindset though? As a youngster at sixteen, you know you're playing for a professional team like you know Coventry City in you know in their youth ranks, and then all of a sudden one day, you know almost like your dreams have almost you know had a door slammed on your dreams. I mean, how does a sixteen year old you know, Andy sort of cope with that. I mean, what was what was that physically like? I know you just said you went back to you know playing for the districts and the school teams. Yeah, it, it was it was really tough. I felt 
it, one, it was a bit of a bolt out of the blood. I didn't really expect it. I actually thought, you know, um, um, was good enough in that squad of players to, to get a scholarship. Um, obviously, we didn't know there was 10, 11 Irish lads coming over. Um, in our age group, that pretty much took all the slots, really. Um, and I felt I felt I let people down. I felt I let my, especially my mum, who had been, mum and dad, who, you know, especially my mum, who, who had, you know, travelled here, there and everywhere with me, uh, and my dad as well, and, 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 you know, my poor sister who just gets dragged along, my younger sister who just got dragged along every every weekend. You know, I, I, I felt I let them down because, you know, it was their dream as well. Do you know what I mean? I know what, and I, I know what parents go, it's probably even worse now because clubs are picking them up at six years old. From six to 16, that's probably all they know. Uh, so it, it's, um, it, was a, it, was a, it was it was really tough going back to school, like I said, um, back into sort of the school team, back into the district team. I always remember my first district game back. I was on the bench a uh, Saturday morning. I just, it, 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 it was just a real worrying time you know you got your GCSEs to think about and stuff as well so you all you know but all you all you really care about is football at that at that that moment uh you know I'm back in the district team we're on the bench and I, I think I come on second half and we won in in the end um and then I was sort of chasing the dream then trialing everywhere um I went to Notts County um I played right back scored I think I scored what one maybe two in that in a in a trial game from right back Thought I had a great game. Um, I, I, I'd really love to know the guy's name, but I, you know I can't I can't remember it for some reason. But the guy, one of the coaches, pulled my mom to one side and just said, you know, oh, what's he like at school? Um, and you know she probably said not that great <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But um, he said, well, you know, we should concentrate on on, on schoolwork really, other than football, because he probably you know he's not going to make it. Um, so like you know hearing things like that, it kind of does knock yeah. your confidence a little bit. Um, but luckily, I went to sort of exit trials. They were at Lillyshaw at the time. So you, you sort of stay there for um, you go like on a, a Thursday. Um, you, tr you, you meet your team that you're gonna. Uh, this, this was bad. It's a bit different now. I think there's a lot more. Uh, you, I think you're just thrown into it pretty much nowadays. But then, then it was. Um, you, you met up the day before. Uh, you, you, you trained with your team, so you got to know your teammates a little bit. Uh, you stayed over at Lily Shaw, um, you know, which is a great experience in itself. Um, and then the, the next day, obviously, scouts from all over the country come and watch you play. You played about three or four games, um, and so yeah, I, I played in it. I, I was really lucky. I'm, I wasn't renowned for my goal scoring, especially being as a being a right back. Really, um, you know, I, I started my career sort of attacking midfielder at Coventry City, and then I slowly got back to to. I think Richard Money put me at right back, um, and, and it, it, it sort of went on from there, really. Uh, so I started right back in the first minute. I scored a header, bullet header from a corner. Uh, then I played. I thought I played really well uh, from then on in. I think that gave me a lot of confidence. Um, do you find though that, 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 that sorry, Andrew, do, do you right. find that, that from sort of your era onwards, if you like, or perhaps just before you and afterwards and, and since? There is a much more opportunity for lads like yourself who were released than the one. I mean, I got released in seven, 1972 by Swansea, and that was it. There was nothing. Yeah, yeah, that was the end of it. You know, I, there was nowhere for me to go. Yeah. Well, fortunately, Ron Atkinson signed me for Kettering. But they, there was no exit trials. There was none of these you know, opportunities that, that there seems to be these days. A lot, lot better, isn't it? In, in, or a lot more opportunity. Absolutely, I think you know it can get. It, 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 we can always be better. Um, you know, you sort of. You know, I've worked in 18s football now. I've worked in 23 football since I retired, and you can definitely. You can, it can be a lot better in, in aftercare of players. Definitely, yeah. um, you know, you kind of just discard them a little bit, and it's like you know, not our problem anymore. Um, but I think with the sort of, um, you know, the, the the sort of governing bodies or whoever it was, obviously set these. Uh, LFV, I think they are now the education programs. They set these sort of exit trials up, which is great. Um, you know, and a lot of players do do come back through the system from from um, you know those games. It's, I know it's a difficult environment. You know, you you're playing three or four, five, six games or whatever in a couple of hours' time, and it's a really one. It's hard to stand out when there's so many players. Um, 
uh, you know, it might not just be your day, you know, you might not be in a very good team, you know, all those type of mm. factors come into it. But yes, they do get better opportunities. It's probably still not enough, uh, enough. Um, but at least they are, you know, they, they are getting better with them, them opportunities. And, um, uh, you know, they, look, for, um, luckily for me, um, I think, um, you know, I think we had uh, Trevor Gould, uh, Bobby Gould's brother, who was he was at commentary at the time. He was watching that game as well. Um, obviously, after the exit trials, then I got a few. So you get a letter with who ticked your box. Who, so then you contact you contact them. And I, I said I think I had like ten or eleven uh, clubs on that list, which was great. Had a couple of trials here and there. I think I ended up in Colchester. Um, Jeff Harrop, you know, top top guy. Um, he basically brought me in. I stayed at here, like, um, in with his with his son, and, and they took me out for snooker, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I was going to sign for Colchester, and Trevor Gould phoned me um, from Coventry City at the time and just said, "Look, I think we've made a mistake. Um, you know, would you come back and, and sign a scholarship back at Coventry City?" Um, you know, at the time, I'm 16 years old. I'm three and a half hours away from home, unfamiliar to me. Um, you know, Coventry's down the road from Birmingham, half an hour. Um, you know, it was a no-brainer. I kind of knew everybody there. Um, you know, unfortunately for Jeff and, and, and Colchester, they were brilliant for me. Uh, they couldn't have done enough for me, but, you know, I just that closer to home. Uh, and luckily enough, I went back to Coventry City. Um, uh, done, a, done, my scholar, done my scholarship there. Um, obviously, really, really tough. Had some really, really tough coaches. Scottish angry coaches who, um, it, when you when you at the time you just think you know they 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 they're hard as nails you know they they're um, you know it's a t it's a t real tough opening a real tough school uh, but when you look back those type of people are you know absolutely fantastic for you um, you know we li I live at the training ground at, um, at Coventry City's training ground it's still there now uh, like the, all the all the rooms have gone now I think. You know, players live in sort of houses and with families and stuff now. Uh, we all lived together at, um, at the training ground. So just there's a canteen on the, on, on the lower floor and above that was like 12, 13 rooms. So all the Irish lads and English lads and who had to travel and stuff stayed in these, these dormitories. We had like um, a couple, Roy and Marie, who looked after us. Uh, we had jobs. We had, um, you know, chores to do. We had... Jobs, obviously, in, in the day for football, so boots, kit, all that sort of stuff, changing rooms. Um, overnight, we, you know, we, 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 we dishwasher, washing up, whatever it was, vacuuming. We had chores away from it. So it was a really, really good grounding. Everyone's together. Uh, you know, we lived on top of each other in the middle of nowhere, really. Um, obviously, as you can tell, 15, 20 lads. You know, there's, it's, it's carnage at times. Um uh, obviously, especially ten uh, you know, Irish lads who own, uh, only went home sort of once in three months. They must have been going stir crazy at times, um, you know. But it's a great laugh, a great sort of environment to be in, uh, you know. And then, it, then, you, then when when work starts at sort of eight nine o'clock in the morning, first team players come strolling in like Richard Shaw's, your Gary McAllister's, Robert Page, you know, go for Gary Breen's. I can go through through loads loads of them. Um, you know, you had to knock on the door to go into to, to a first team track changing room. Their kit had to be right, their boots had to be spot on, um, and it's completely different now to, to what it was then. You know, I, I much prefer what it was back then. The grounding you got, um, you know, from and what and I, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to be watching um, how these players worked day in day out, what they did, what what they ate, what time they come in. Um, you know, I was living in their pockets pretty much. Um, obviously, you know, if you put a foot wrong, they tell you. Um, back then as well, there was about, because we had under 17s and 19s who had like 40 scholars in the building, all crammed into one little changing room. Um, I had, you know, I've ginger, ginger air. I just wanted to stay well out, out the way as possible, not open my mouth, not put my foot in it because I didn't want any stick. Um, yeah, obviously you got you, you got your people who've got big mouths who are big characters, uh, kind of running the dressing room. I was just in the corner, try and stay quiet, get my jobs done, train okay, uh, and get to bed. That was always pretty much my uh, my day for for two years as a scholar, really. 
Uh, but some great moments, obviously, as well. We 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 had, you know, even though how tough it was, um, you know, we had some we had some great moments. Um, I mean, there's one story where um, we had to. There was a curfew. Had to be in, but I think first years had to be in by eleven o'clock. Um, second years had to be in the lodge by twelve o'clock. Um, and unfortunately, I'd gone home for for the weekend, so you know, I wasn't really involved in this, but. Um, I think two, three o'clock in the morning, no one was back. Um, so one of the coaches, George Mackey, um, you know, Gordon Strachan's mate, um, Gary McAllister's uh, mate as well, um, drove into the, uh, drove into Coventry City Centre with the Coventry City minibus um, and waited outside the nightclub. And when all the lads come out of the nightclub, he, he ran, like you just said on the era uh, before, before we joined this about the coach trip, where he rounded them up outside the the, uh, the nightclub um all the lads were there was about 10 15 lads all all um i think i think craig Pied, my assistant manager at banbury united was one of them i think to be fair he was um he was lined up against against the wall having a rollicking at three o'clock on a saturday morning obviously there's people coming out of nightclubs laughing you know taking the mickey out of these lads uh, but that's kind of the grounding we got really do you know what i mean even when you it's out of hours of, of, of um a football, so to speak, you're not the training ground, you know, you, you're representing a football club, you're representing yourselves, the coaches. Um, and obviously they got at, they got put back on the, the minibus and back to the lodge. Uh, and obviously got a dressing down, I think, from Gary McAllister, who was on the Monday morning, telling us how to obviously how to live our lives right and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it was a fantastic grounding, and luckily or not, I made my debut then. Uh, for Coventry City in the Championship when I was 18, I think it was 2003, um, you know, which was a, a sort of a great, you know, I, I, I'd only played a couple, but obviously reserve games as well. I had some really good, I'd only played about two reserve games. Um, always remember one, one was against Tottenham and they had like sort of Dean Richards, uh, centre arse, Christian Zieger, left back, some, you know, proper, proper players in, in a reserve team, not a 23s team when you're playing against you know, people the same age or younger. You're playing against you're playing against proper men who have played hundreds and hundreds of games at the stadium. So you get more of that that first team feel as well. But do you um, think that do you think that's uh, something else that's changed that, and probably not not always for the better? Where you know, going back, in, you know, not so many years ago, like you say, you had reserve sides where you did come across your your top men uh, coming back from injury or whatever whatever it might be. I mean, nowadays, like like you say, you're playing it all against or with your same ages, aren't you? Now, your 18s, your 21s, your 23s. Yeah, absolutely. And I, to be fair, I, especially recently, I think the last I've seen a lot of lot of um, people talking. I've seen a lot of debates. I've seen a lot of um, sort of articles where now they're starting to realise. Well, I, I don't know why it's taking so long. That you know, it's probably better for. For young lads to go out and experience men's football, whether that's from, you know, in, into, um, you know, Southern League, Southern League Premier or, or, or lower, step four, step five, um, you know, whether that's if you're, you know, uh, into sort of league clubs, you're coming into the National League. Um, you know, I think there's a massive, massive cry now for players to go and go out and get that experience. You know, we've got a young lad. Uh, on loan from from Banbury United, and he, he will go on and on. He's 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 absolutely outstanding. Uh, James Golding, seventeen years old, um, you know, but he's got a lot to learn. But he's absolutely he will play sort of League One Championship. Hopefully, he can go go further. Um, you know, with Oxford Oxford United and beyond. Um, you know, it's a great ground. It's a great grounding for him. He's had a lot to learn. You know, he's seventeen, but he's six foot four. Um, you know. Would he play against two strikers, you know, in an under 18s or a 23 team? You know, a lot of them play one up front or or whatever. But he's, you know, he's, he's learning different traits, um, you know, from that instead of a kind of like for like. You know, if you watch one 23 game, you've probably seen them all that, mm. last season. They're all they're all pretty similar, um, you know. And I think there's a lot of, of I've read a lot lately where they are starting now to sort of. You know, use sort of um, you know lower league, non-league clubs, whatever it is, uh, now to get that experience. And I think it's massive, not just for footballing ability. I think just everything about it is sort of you know the grounding, your um, 
you sort of the, the, the environments. Obviously, you want to try and crack the right environment for players, but um, you know that obviously winning, you know, three points matters, one point matter, whatever it is, going away to to grounds where you you know you've 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 got to get a bus or whatever it is, whatever yeah. it is. I think that grounding is is definitely definitely helps them massively. Yeah, I mean we we've got uh, I mean I, I'm with Rawns Town it used to be a Southern League club in the, in the in in not so distant past, but we've got lads from Kettering Town who are not in their first team squad yeah. who are playing with us in our first team. You know, so they're getting a good grounding at step five. You know, which is like you say is a, is better than playing with in their own under eighteen or or under twenty one level. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you get a lot of college teams and stuff like that now. Um, but that 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 experience of, of being in a league club, um, you know, whatever whatever level it is, um, you know that you know, some really really good people, um, you know, in in, in non league and it, um, you know, I think it's a great grounding for them. You know, higher. You know, obviously, yeah, sort of league clubs. You know, you know, obviously, a lot of national league now is is professional anyway. Uh, you look even, you know, there's a lot, of, you know, you go down step four, step five, you know, there's some fantastic teams, some fantastic setups. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, I think there's, you know, 15, 20, whatever years ago, it's probably, uh, you know, non-league was, you know, nothing really compared to what it is now. You know, a lot of people are so surprised when they go down to, to football clubs and how, how well they run, the facilities they've got. Um, you know, there's football people all, all, all in that. So I think now people are, you know, especially 23 teams are starting to to learn. You know, I've had, you know, managers, uh, 23s managers already, um, you know, want to send players out on loan. So also, you know, in the, in, in the northern sort of uh, sections of the of the league um, because they know it's beneficial for, more beneficial for them than, than 23s football and to try and, they think it's better to bridge that gap that way than, than going from 23s football straight into, into first team. So hopefully more clubs um, will go down that route. And, you know, obviously that'll be great then for, for non-league as well and, 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 and lower league clubs, you know, to, um, you know, to obviously to, 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 to use, utilise those, uh, those players. I mean, as you said though, uh, you know, Andy, I mean, first game, uh, you know, for Coventry was uh, in Division 1 against Burnley uh, in oh, yeah. 2003. I mean, that must have been a, and I have known talking about going in against um, blokes. I mean, you couldn't get much sort of fiercer than someone like a Burnley to play your first game against. No, I think Gareth, Gareth Taylor was the, their number nine. I think he scored. I think he's the Man- Manchester City women's manager now, and he was a he was a big guy, proper you know old old style sort of centre forward. Um, it's funny that I mean I got put in the squad on the Friday. Didn't expect to be involved at all. Um, I don't know how many was in the squad at all, but you know, so I just done my normal thing. Um, I went to the local social club with my old man. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I weren't drinking, but I had, you know, I just had a, a few few points of coke or whatever it was. Um, just on my normal things. Um, you know, I didn't expect to sort of play. Uh, then half one on the next day, like you, I'm, I'm starting. You know, pretty much out of the blue. I'd rarely, I'd only barely trained with the um, with the first team really, and I just got through with the deep end. Who was the first team manager then? Uh, Gary McAllister was. Oh, Gary McAllister was. Yeah. yeah, so and he was playing as well at the time. He was player manager, so I had I had the best of both worlds. He was, um, you know, a fantastic manager, fantastic coach, and he was still playing. He was unbelievable playing as well. So for me to sort of come in, uh, you know, my debut and him playing as well, it was it was great. I had like Richard Shaw next to me, um, you know, what a what a guy he's. Um, you know, there was so much experience in and around the club, uh, the team then. You know, I, I just felt I felt at ease, and I, I, I just for some reason I don't know if it was age or what. Especially then, I just felt I didn't, you know, I didn't really have much to lose. I just just went in and played the game like I would normally play a game. Um, and then luckily, you know, I kind of had a, a you know a half decent career from from then on in really, and uh, you know, I really really enjoyed my time. Was that had, had they moved then, or are they still at Highfield? Right, so so that was at Highfield Road. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's, there's another question. I mean, I mean, I'll come to that question in a second because because you you are famous with Coventry City fans, but and there's a reason for that. And we'll go into that in a second. But I mean, literally, I mean, as a player though, and as a young player, I mean, when you get to the following season and your shirt number comes from forty and goes down to number two, does that get to a situation where you then think to yourself, well, you know, I'm a 
I'm a starter almost every week. When you know, when when you get to that number of, of being the sort of the the traditional right back number of number two. Yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I think I my first shirt was forty, was it? Around right about then. Um, but I, there was uh, there was about fifteen games left of the season um, then as well. So I played my debut, and then I didn't play the, the next game. You know, he took me out of it. You know, and. Um, you know, that was just, it was just great man management from from McAllis at the time, and then um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why or what the game was at the time. Then he, he brought me back in for another game. Um, um, I think we played Grimsby away. We won two two nil. I always remember I must have took someone out. I can't I think it was Jones or something like that. And he, and I just remember him whispering to me, yeah, "Do that again." And I will absolutely volley you into that stand. Um, <laughs> and I didn't do that again. So I think every time I got the ball, then I just passed it off. Uh, we won that game, um, and then we then I, we played Sheffield Wednesday away at Hillsborough, my third or fourth game in. Uh, we lost five one. Um, you know, real tough Hillsborough, real big crowd. Um, Chef Kikuka, I think, scored that trick. Um, done the old swan dive, um, and then I think I got. Come, come off like 60, 70 minutes. It was a real, real torrid, tough evening. So then I got brought out the next game, um, went back in. I went to, we played Sunderland, the way at the stadium of light. Uh, Julio Arca was giving me absolute torrid for about 20 minutes. Uh, I think McAllister brought me off. Um, so just little things. I think that 15 game spell was brilliant for me because it was, um, you've, you've, you've got into the first team, but he kind of took it away from me as well. And, Kind of drip feeding me in, which is which is brilliant because it was a great experience. Mm. You know, you see some players now where, you know, because you're going to be inconsistent at that age, um, you know, and they continue playing and and you know they they kind of get vilified for it, but it's not really their fault. Um, and, pl- and managers don't seem to realise they need to be brought out the firing line a little bit and 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 that sort of. Um, and I thought Gary McAllister was brilliant for me. Uh, in that, and then, then the next, like you said, at the end of the season, then I've gone from forty, whatever it was, to to number two. You know, I'm, you know, I've gone. You know, there's some big players at the time, you know, around that. Obviously, we, the country just come down from the uh, the Premier League at that time, so there was still quite a lot of um, players from that Premier League era h- hanging around. Um, you know, and I, now I've got that number two shirt, so it was a great feeling. Um, you know, and I spent some, you know, two or three more years at the football club. That's gold. Remember it well, dear. Against uh, Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I do. Yeah, um, I think Michael Dawson was playing centre half. There's a there was a um, I can remember him playing. Um, I think it was a left foot. We, we were one nil down at half time. It was just after half time. I've cut in on my left foot on the edge of the box. I'm not too sure why I was there. I'm, I'm I, I, I don't know how, how what's happened for me to be there. Uh, I've, I've, I've hit it with a left foot in the bottom corner. I think I've ran into the crowd and got booked, but you know I just wasn't bothered at that time. Uh, what I do remember that type of game as well. We lost three one in the end to Nottingham Forest, and I was walking off the pitch and I'm like, like going get hype to the crowd, like waving to my mom and dad. I'm like, get that because like I scored, and I got a phone call straight after the game saying, you know, you just lost three one. Do not celebrate. <laughs> um, I know you scored, I know you're happy. It's your first goal, but. Why do you don't celebrate um, at all? Because, you know, you, if your manager sees that, you're going to get absolutely battered. So, you know, I, I remember from, you know, I didn't score that many, to be fair, from from, that, from then on in. But, you know, just around it in a little bit. Um, yeah, but a, a great feeling to score your first goal, definitely. Well, here, what, what I've got in front of me is during the season, you made uh, uh, more first appearances but re- and was rewarded with a four-year contract and praise from then-manager Eric Black. Yeah, so I'm, 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 unfortunately at the time, I think Gary McAllister, his wife, um, I think died of cancer, which was yeah, illness, yeah. quite a crying shame for the football club. Um, obviously, you know, we were absolutely devastated because he was, you know, he was brilliant for us. He was, um, especially for me, I remember, I remember, I don't know if it was that for, that that contract or the one before, I didn't have an agent or anything. You know, Gary McAllister, so me and my mum just went down to, to the, to Highfield Road to the ground. Gary McAllister was there, um, had, a, had a contract, in, and he basically just said, said to my mum, like, I'll look after him. You know, this this is a contract, what we I feel like he feels right for me at that particular time. Um, and me and my mum were like, you know, whatever you say, we will we will sign. So, you know, I, my first contract was was all down to him, um, what he put on the table. 
um, you know, because I, I, I trusted him because he was he was such a great guy, player, manager, whatever it was. Um, so it, that was massive for me. That was, I think, you know, that didn't, I don't think it helped me then um, sort of pushing on. Yeah, I got a four-year contract. Eric Black was brilliant, to be fair to him. Obviously, he was his assistant at the time. Um, but then, obviously, I don't know if we're struggling a little bit. He brought some of like more experienced players in. You know, I'm only 18, 19 at the time. So I was kind of in and out um, from then. And then we had a few more managers, um, you know, which which obviously then new managers come in, they want to bring their own players in. You know, some, some of them don't really trust the younger players. Um, you know, so it's a little bit frustrating from them. I still, you know, played over 100, 100 games at Conscious City, you know, in the championship, which is great. But um, I didn't feel that, you know, I reached my full potential then. Um, you know, because especially because of the change of managers and then bringing their own players in, really, which was quite frustrating. Well, of course, you are play, super famous with Coventry fans for, for, for a reason. Um, and I've got it written down here in front of me on what that reason is. Um, and I mean, tell everybody what that reason is and what was it like on that day? Yeah, so, you know, I was, I was quite fortunate enough to score the last last goal at, at Highfield Road. Uh, you know, it's a fantastic, iconic stadium, uh, proper old school stadium. Um, you know, the, it only goes to show what, you know, what they've moved into, into now was a bit of a disaster for the last few years when that's to move to Birmingham City and, and, and play there. Uh, but at the time, it was, you know, an iconic stadium, you know, a lot, you know, they play the line that is sort of the top top division uh, there as well. Um, it was a, it was just a, to be fair, we were struggling. We're near the bottom of the league um, at, the, at the time, and we needed. We, there's only two, obviously. Now we had an away game to finish off the season. We needed to win really to um, stave off relegation. We were quite close to to the bottom three at the time, so it was a big day for us just to go and win the game. Um, but the atmosphere was was unbelievable that day. The sun it was like baking hot. Um, you know, everyone was in the ground two hours before. So it was like when you come out for the warm up, usually, you know, you get your dribs and drafts there and the odd claps here and there. You know, at this day it was pretty much full house at, you know, at, at two o'clock, whatever the um whatever it was. So so you come out for warm up, it, it was it was it was noisy you know the fans were there it was just a, a real real good day all the obviously legends were there jimmy hill was there singing um you know obviously the the, the Coventry city songs all that sort of stuff going on um you know obviously we had a, you know i was on the bench that day um you know i just remember adrian heath getting all the players into a little huddle and you know if you if you if you don't enjoy today's like today like um days like today uh you know you shouldn't really be in the in the in the game to be perfectly honest you know, it was just a, a fantastic day. Um, and then the lads started off on fire. I think it was like 4 1 up at half time. Um, you know, we, some, we were brilliant. I think we were uh, 5 2 up, I think, at the time. Um, 25 minutes to go. Um, I get the nod to, to, to come on. Um, I think just to shore it up a little bit. So he put me right wing. Uh, obviously, Richard Duffy was playing right back. So he just put me one in, one in front of him. Just to kind of shore it up a little bit, so two fullbacks down to one side, um, and then a throw, I think we had a throw in it. It was through to me. The defender nipped in, um, so I, you know I didn't touch it, and then it's, it's, it's gone back through our our, our uh, back line. I think Steve Storns and out to Marcus Hall. Marcus Hall is kind of you know I could I think I see this goal nearly every day. That's why it's like in my in my head so vividly. Um, into sort of Dealey had a ball or Stern John, uh, and then it gets headed up, headed across by two centre halves, um, and it just he just felt I was just running in on the edge of the box. It just fell to me sort of like on a half volley, um, pretty much just closed my eyes and hit it as hard as a club. I think to be honest, and um, you know the slightest nick and it's gone into the into the top corner, which is then pandemonium. Obviously, I didn't know, really know what to do. Um, I've ran round the goal on the and, and beyond the goal. You know, the fans trying to just clap here. It was just an unbelievable feeling uh, just to score a goal. It was 6-2. We'd, we'd, we'd won the game um, pretty comfortably uh, at that point. But, you know, I just, just went absolutely mental. Um, 
Well, it says it says here that you you were the recipient of the Goal of the Season award and a special award for the historic goal. He's running five high. <laughs> so he's running high five celebration became the moment that almost all Coventry fans remember him for. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I, I was very fortunate then to sort of get Goal of the Season for that. I think just because he was such a, um, an iconic goal at the time, last goal at Ifield Road. You know, it weren't a bad one, you know, it, you know, took a, a slight deflection, but it was going in anyway, to be fair. Um, yeah, decent celebration. Then obviously at, at the end of the game, you know, when you're coming out, I didn't even think anything of it. And then Richard Shaw just gone, you know, you've, you've just scored the glass goal, you know, at, at, at the ground kind of thing. And I was like, you know, at the time I didn't really, I think I had a house party that night. I just moved into my new house. Um and I, I just remember playing it on repeat. There's loads of people here. And I just, I just want, forget the music, just watch this on repeat on Sky Sports News, I think all night on a loop. Uh, but yeah, it was a great day. Really, really great day. You know, one for the football club. We stay, you know, we, we were safe from relegation. We are winning that that game. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm just really fortunate that I was, I was um, you know, in the right place at the right time and scored that goal, really. And then, according to this, it says that you was then went on loan then to, from there from Coventry went on loan to to, to Brighton, uh, I and mean, then eventually when released at Coventry, uh, signed for Brighton in two thousand and seven. Yeah, yes, I went on loan to um, to Brighton. Um, I mean, that was, I was uh, it was a strange one because I was I was, I was in the first team at Coventry. I played against. I think we played Plymouth on the Saturday, drew one one. Um, it was the international break the week after, so we didn't have a game. Um, so like we, we trained three or four days, and then on the Thursday, um, Thursday or Friday, um, we had the, was going to have the weekend off. And I, um, I, I, Dean White from Brighton Hove Albion called me and said, "I, um, when you, um, you, you know, I've, you, we've been told that you're available for loan. Do you want to come down here on loan?" I was like, "Hang on a minute, I don't know anything about this. Um, I played last week. Do you know what I mean? I, I've been playing quite regular." Then I went and uh, obviously went and seen the manager. I think it was Mickey Adams at the time, and he um, he said, "Yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, um, you know, we we want you to go out on loan." I said, "That's fair enough. That's fine." Um, and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd barely, I barely left Birmingham, sort of Solihull area, Coventry area, in my whole life, really. So to move down to to Brighton was quite an eye opener for me. Straight, I was shot on the seafront in a hotel there. Absolutely, you know, loved it. You know, what a place. Um, unbelievable place. I've met friends for life down there. Really enjoyed my time. Uh, went on loan there to the end of the, well, uh, for two or three months of the, that season. Got recalled. I think Ian Dowie come in at that, that point at Coventry City. My contract was, at, you know, up at the end of the season. Um, he basically just said, like, you know, obviously, you know, you've, you've, you've had a great stint here. I think it might be time for you to move on, which was... Which was fine. obviously I didn't want to leave, but um, you know that was fine. And then in the, in the summer, luckily enough, obviously because I had a really good loan spell with Brighton, um, I, I signed there permanently in that summer. Um, you know, again played probably over 100 games with Brighton uh, in League One. Um, you know, I had some fantastic times down there as well. Uh, plunked myself right by the sea. You know, in Birmingham, you know, uh, there's a canal around the corner. That's about it. So. So for me, just being around the seaside was was unbelievable. My family loved it. Um, you know, they love coming down every weekend. Um, you know, I really, really, really enjoyed my time there. As I said, I'm, I've met some great friends down there. So you know, I still I still go down there quite regularly now to to, to see those type of people. Really, really good football club. Uh, fantastic place to, to be. Um, had some really good times there. The first couple of years are brilliant. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, then I had a, I had a bit of a stick. I had a, a sort of a bad. We had um, first season was, was was I think we just finished just below the playoffs. Steve Wilkins, outstanding. Um, Andy, can I ask you about something here? Because it, yeah. it's one of those sort of things when you read Wikipedia and it's like and you sort of do a bit of research and stuff and you read certain <laughs> things. You think. Why would somebody put that in there? But it, it's literally it says he, his first game after signing for the club on a permanent basis came in an opening game of the season, a two-one defeat to Crew. Then it says he was sent off two weeks later after a, a second bookable offence in a two-new loss to Tramir Rovers. I mean, why would somebody put that in there? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I remember them both of them games quite well. To be fair, um, yeah, the Crew Crew won the one they lost. Lost, uh, yeah, lost, lost two one. Tramir game, yeah, I remember that quite well. 
Um, I tried to get it rescinded and, and basically because there was, there was two or three players coming at the same time and I, I basically said it wasn't me. Uh, I shouldn't have got booked. It should have been the other lad, but yeah, it didn't get rescinded. And uh, yeah, that was my, my first sending off of my career. I think that was. Um, um, yeah, two bookable offences. That was a that was a bad day at the office. That one, yeah. But I mean, I don't know that be, yeah, to be honest, <laughs> I mean, one of me I should ask you about before you go back into your story and 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 see how disappointed you may have been or may not have been. I mean, it says here, and and, and whether this is actually true because you never know. We you know with Wikipedia, it says with his contract expiring at the end of two thousand eight two thousand nine season, and he attracted interest from Walsall and Leeds United. Around the same time, he was offered a new contract after his move to Leeds stalled. How disappointing was that to you know to maybe get a chance to play at somewhere as iconic as as Leeds United? Um, so, too far, I nearly joined Leeds twice. I think it might have been might have been that season where I went to Brighton. Um, I was I don't think I was ever really close. Um, I mean, during that during that off season, to be fair. Um, I had a phone. I was I was away in sort of my bar or somewhere like that. You know, you know I can't even afford to go camping down the road at the minute. But back then it was sort of my bar or whatever it was. Um, and I had, a, I had a phone call from my agent. He went, "Are you wing? Are you are you you lying down?" I think I must have been hungover or something on, at the time. So I, was, I was still in bed. Um, and he goes, uh, "Birmingham City are interested in what you think." And I was like, "And God, I've got you know this is this is a big one here because I'm a massive Aston Villa fan." Um, obviously all my family is um, what do you think I think because Eric Black had, had, had recently gone there he was the uh, he was assistant manager to Steve Bruce at the time um, and I think I was really clear I think they bought Stephen Kelly from from Tottenham Hotspur in the end and I was kind of second choice if that one didn't go through so luckily enough I didn't have to make that 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 choice um, you know so that was that was a close one, but the Leeds one in, in that summer didn't really materialise, I don't think. But two years down the line, um, when because I, I, that summer I signed a two-year contract with with Brighton. After the two years, I've done really well. I think I got player of the season at Brighton in my second season. Um, so and they offered me a contract sort of near the end of the season, really. So I was I was allowed, you know, I could speak to to anyone else. Um, and Leeds came in for me that season. Um, and what killed me really was I got sent off. I only got sent off, I think, three times in my three times in my career. And that I played 47, 48 games in that season. I think I was on 11 yellow cards and I've been sent off once for two yellow cards. A stupid thing to do. I think we're 3 1 up in there was a 90th minute. I didn't get a decision and I've, I've slammed the ball down and got a second yellow card. Um, and I was I was first choice basically to to to, to move to Leeds and I, like you said an iconic massive club I've played there a few times it's one of the clubs where you walk out the tunnel and you just know you know that you know when that sort of marching on together or that um, you know that the, the the music comes on you know that you're at a, a, t- a proper proper big club here and um, you know obviously I was really interested at the time. You know, playing for Leeds, you know, that would have been, even though they were, they were in League One, but you always felt, you know, they, they were on the up, they were going to get promoted at some stage. Um, but, you know, they didn't take me on because of they thought, um, you know, my sort of discipline re- uh, record weren't great. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd got booked 11 times that season, but I played 48 games. So I'm only getting booked one, once in four or five games. And as a right back, I, I didn't think that was too bad, to be perfectly honest. Um, maybe that sort of that sending off killed me a little bit towards the end of the, it was like three or four games to go at the end of the season uh, might have killed me a little bit with that move um, you know obviously which is a little bit frustrating at the time but um, and then obviously I signed a, I stayed with Brighton I stayed for another I signed another two years uh, and then that two years really didn't materialise really like the previous two years were brilliant we just finished outside the, the playoffs in the first year Second year worked great, as in we need to, you know, we really, I think we, we stayed up on the last game of the season. Um, um, but I got player of the season, I played pretty much every game. Um, you know, I was, I was, we used 40, 40 odd players that season, we had a turnover of players and managers. It was, it was unbelievable. And but I was one of the mainstays in that team and got player of the season that earned me my contract and nearly earned me a, a move elsewhere. And then the next two years, um, you know, I had, um, during pre-season, 
Um, I'd done my groin and I'd had to have a hernia operation, which was my second hernia operation I'd, I'd, I'd had. Um, and I missed three or four months at the start of the season. We, we started off poorly. Um, then Gus Poyer come in. Um, I, literally, has he come in? Sorry, I was just coming back from, from, from that injury. I'd been three or four months. Um, I barely played a game really, and I was thrown thrown into the team. I think we had Southampton away on TV on a on a Sunday afternoon. It must have been an international break, so there's no Premier League games on. So we were the main game on Sunday sort of afternoon at half four away at Southampton. Won three one, had a great game. Um, you know, I, I felt it. You know, I got through that game on, on adrenaline really, um, just because you know it was a big game, sort of local derby ish. Um, and we had a game on a Tuesday. I think that was against, um, I think it was Wickham or something in the Johnson's Paint Trophy. I should never have played in that game. I should have, you know, I should have played that that sort of Sunday game and had the sort of the, the, that kind of midweek game off. I played in that game. Uh, and then we had Leeds at home on the Saturday. Um, and even in the warm up, I felt I am struggling here. Like my, I'm, I'm sore. Um, you know, just just warming up was it was a chore. Uh, we ended up, you know, I played because you know when when you get back in a team, the one thing I didn't want to do is just say, look, I, I don't, I'm not right for this game. I need a rest. You know, I'd, I'd have just thought, you know, he'd think the worst of me. You know, he probably wouldn't play me again. So I just gr- grind it out. Uh, we ended up losing three 0 I think I took off there about sixty minutes. Um, weren't a great game. Um, for for me or for for us, uh, probably shouldn't have played, but I did. Then we had then we had to Southampton near top of the league, Leeds United top of the league on the Tuesday. So in the space of ten days, I played Southampton, Leeds, and Norwich on the Tuesday night away. Um, again, I think on the Monday or Tuesday, in the sort of when we when we've gone to a hotel and we're having a walk before the game, I think because Poyo said to me, "What well, are you feeling?" And I, you know, stupidly, uh, as I, I've said, I'm fine. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll crack on. Um, we ended up losing four-one uh, to Norwich that game. You know, we after that Southampton game, the adrenaline that got me through the game. I was really struggling the next three games, and it was just, I just nowhere near the level. And then that was it for me. You know, I was, I was still injured pretty much in those three games. weren't fit enough. And then that was the end for me pretty much, which was. Devastating, really, because I've had two great couple of great years. I love the love the football club. You know, really enjoy my time down there. New manager comes in. He's seen me for three games. Um, you know, one of them was really, really good. The adrenaline got me through the game. Uh, the other the other two games, I was just nowhere near fit enough. Um, you know, for them type of games. Um, and then that was pretty much it for me. Then I still had another year and a half left. I think uh, barely played that that season when I loaned to Chesterfield at the time. I mean, I say you had you had a couple of uh, loan spells. You went to Chesterfield, but then you played for the biggest club that you could play for <laughs> in your in, in in your career. So then you moved to the Mighty O's um, it, uh, after that. So I mean, what was that like playing? You know, playing for Leighton Orient. I know it was only like for a couple of years, but I mean, it was uh, you know, it's one of the clubs that I used to go to with, with me old man. And, you know, you played under, for me, probably the best Orient boss that they've had in present, you know, over the last few years in Russell Slade as well. I mean, what was what was that like? Um, it's fair, the Chesterfield one weren't great at all. I think I played 50, we were second in the league, ended up outside the playoffs. It was a, a bit of a disaster, really. Uh, and John Sheridan was an absolute character, but I learned a lot there. Um, and that was the end of that season. The next season was same again, in and out of the Brighton team. I was never... Uh, like we talked about the, the the sort of I was number two at the time. We talked about this earlier, and I got a phone call from Charlie Ertway, this sort of one of the first team coaches. Um, so Gus Poy, I didn't even pick up the phone really and, and, and explain anything to me. They just said we're going to take the number two two shirt off you um, in the summer. So you know, leading up to pre season, I I already know that you know my time here is is pretty much done at Brighton. Um, I think it got into the kind of done pre-season. We've got into uh, the season, weren't, get, weren't getting lucky. I need to get out here. And luckily, uh, Russell, Russell Slade, obviously he was my manager at Brighton the year before. Uh, and he got sacked, obviously, for Gus Poyer. And he'd gone to Latin Orient. Um, so I knew him really well. And he, he, he kind of got me in, got me in. Uh, Latin Orient, absolutely loved it. What a football club. Uh, loved my time down there. 
really, really good group of players. Uh, you know, fantastic group of players. So I went there initially on loan for about two or three months. Um, done, done, done really well. Um, I think my loan was up. Um, got sent back to Brighton. Unfortunately, I didn't want to go back. They were flying in League One at the time. I think they went and got promoted. It was around Christmas time. Didn't really want to, to, to go back to so it. I wanted to stay. Uh, but the only the only way I could stay really is, you know, um, Brighton released me on a free. Um, obviously, you know, I still had, I still had six months re um, um, remaining on my contract. Um, and this is the really so this is the really frustrating part for me in, in football where um, I had still had six months left in my contracts. Um, I did a deal with Brian just because I wanted to get out of there. I wanted to go and play football. I didn't want to be one of those footballers who just sat on my contract, um, not playing, uh, get to the end of the season. We'll, we'll see from there. I, I just wasn't one of those people. I needed, I needed, I needed it to be somewhere where I felt a part of and I weren't a part of Brian. So there's no point in me being there. I wanted to just get out and, um, you know, they gave me, you know, nowhere near what I should have got really from them. When you, and, and the thing that frustrated me at the time, they, the, the chief exec at the time, I can't remember who it was now, he even told me, you know, because I didn't kick up a fuss, I just go in, train, you know, do my job, what I'm supposed to do. Um, you know, that, that they didn't mind having me there. So they, they didn't, you know, it wasn't, I weren't a bother to them. They could, I could just train for them to the end of the season. And off I, off I went. Whereas other players who were maybe disruptive, uh, you know, bad eggs as so you were, you know, that they wanted to get them out the door and they paid them off handsomely uh, and see you later. Whereas me, um, you know, I, I left, you know, with nowhere near the amount of money I should have got. And then I went to Latin Orient. I just wanted to go and play football. wanted to go back to Latin Orient. Um, and I was I was playing on next to nothing. I was in, I, 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 they could give me about 100 £150 a week, I think it was. Uh, for a league, league one footballer, that is literally like, you know, I think a scholars probably get paid more than that now. <laughs> um, and But I just wanted to play. And so and then I had to, I obviously, I was living in a hotel. I had to move out of the hotel. I had to get a place down there. And obviously in and around London, it's like ridiculous for like, a, you know, on top of a garage, basically. So, you know, I'd, I was actually losing, I actually lost money going from Brighton to Latin Orient. Um, and that probably affected me later on in my career or when I retired. But at the time, you know, I just wanted to play football and it was probably one of my best six months um, I've had as a, as a professional footballer. Um, just loved every minute of it, the team, the, the, the sort of um, the people, the, the players around it. We had a good group of players. We had Harry Kane, obviously, and Tom Carroll come from Tottenham, um, you know, who, who were fantastic. They're only 17, 18 years old, were fantastic. Um, you know, we had a really good young and old squad. The lads were brilliant. Uh, the coaching staff, R Russell and um, Kev Nugent and, and Kev did and were brilliant. Um, just, you know, Lindsay at the back, the kit man, everyone was just, it, I just really, really enjoyed my, my time down there. Um, you know, I think Barry Hearn and Eddie Hearn were kind of in and around it. That We used to use their swimming pool um at their uh, sort of boxing HQ uh, on a Sunday or whenever we needed we, need, we needed to. Um, we finished just outside the playoffs, had some great games. Uh, we got to the fifth round of the FA Cup against Arsenal. Um, we, obviously, yeah. we, we, beat Norwich away, we beat Norwich away from home, who were in the Championship. We beat Swansea away from home, who were in the Championship. And then we played Arsenal at home in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Obviously, Jonathan Zahu, he's, he's fantastic finish in the 90-odd minute. Um, to get us a draw and, and I went to play at the Emirates. I think the game at the Emirates was in between their games in Barcelona um, and, and you needed tickets to go and watch them games. So it was a full house. It was 60,000. We had 9,000 Latin Orient fans. You know what, thought, Andy, Andy, just to stop you there, I was actually there at that game yeah. because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a massive Arsenal fan and, you know, for my pains. And of course, it, 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 Latin Orient was always my, always my second team and it was always my dream to see the two of them play each other in a competitive game of football. And of course, I think the last time that had happened was 1978 FA Cup semi-final. And then, of course, it happened and I got that opportunity, me, my brother, my dad, to take my dad to the Emirates, which he weren't too best pleased that I'll be honest, because he was an <laughs> avid Orient fan. But we were sitting there watching that, and I think the only disappointment, you know, in that game was Nicholas Bentner scored three goals. I mean, how that happened, oh, yeah. I never know to this day. 
from her. <laughs> um, and we actually, we played better. Funny enough, we lost 5 nil in that game, but we actually played a lot better in that game at the Emirates than we did um, we did at home. You know, we were quite nervous at home. I thought we were just, we just, we hung on a little bit and, and, and nicked a goal late on. Whereas the Emirates, we, we, I think we were second. Uh, it's a stupid stat. We were second to Barcelona that that um, that year of how many passes we made at the Emirates. So it just shows how much of the ball we had, how well we actually played. Uh, you know, the scoreline reflects something different. But you know, really, I just felt we we done really well in that game. Um, and it was just a yeah, just a fantastic evening. Um, you know, my family come down for it, friends and whatever. It was just. Um, 9,000 Latin Orient fans, you know, didn't didn't care about the score. It was just the whole the whole evening was 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 brilliant for us. Um, That's my prize possession. That is my half and half scarf. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know how much you get for that, probably now, mate. But um, who cares? It's not for me. It's priceless. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was just a great day. We finished just outside the playoffs, and then. At the end of the season, um, you know, I, I was desperate to stay. I really wanted to stay, but uh, Russell Slade, um, I just had a, a uh, me and my wife had just had a baby, sort of at the end of the season, sort of the April time. Um, obviously, she was still living in Birmingham at the time, um, and then, you know, I, I still I, we would have made it work. I wanted to stay, and then Russell Slade put an offer on the table. Um, I was like, you want me to live in London um, with that? You know, because I was only on 150 quid at the time. Um, and unfortunately, I just I just couldn't um, make it work. Obviously, we were, I, was, I was in some rented accommodation for, for a few months, which, which had run out. Um, and I got an offer from Oxford United that was where I could live at home. I could live back in Birmingham and travel in every day. Um, and it was just wasn't feasible for me to carry on it. Latin Orient, he kept pretty much the same team, and they were so unlucky the next season not to get promoted into into the championship. Literally, um, actually devastated that next season to see um, that final play out. Um, you know, because he's such a great football club. There's some really good people down there. Um, still, some really good people. I hadn't spoke to to anyone for a few years, and 2015. So that was about 2011. I left 2015. Villa in the FA Cup Cup final. Um, you know, and, and I get a, a phone call out of the blue. Uh, the kit man, uh, Ailey, the kit man, gave me a call and said, um, I, I know I haven't spoken to you for a few years, but I know you're a big Villa fan. Do you want, I've got three tickets for you in the Villa end. Um, you know, and that just shows the type of people at that football club. It's just a top, top, uh, great place to, to, to be. Um, you know, I'd love to get back there one day, Russell Slade, uh, and work with him again one day at Leighton Orient. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic football club, um, and unfortunately, because of obviously having a baby and um, you know the money they were kind of off, and I had, to, I, I had to move on, and I could live at home and play for Oxford United at the same time. And uh, you know, fortunately, that was a really fantastic club as well, and I spent seven or eight years there as well, which was great. So I mean, as you say, you moved to, you moved to Oxford, and 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 you know, it's, you spent as you said the, the, the seasons there but I mean once you finished at, at Oxford yeah I said the question I've got about Oxford is, is why is there no stand at one end of that ground <laughs> well, is there, a, is there a, an actual reason because it's always weird whenever you see it on the TV that there's like a car park at the back of one yeah, of the well, stand. I think you know, the the sort of so obviously he used to own Oxford United so Kassam that's why obviously the, he, he still owns the ground uh, he owns the car park owns the sort of uh, there's a bowling green and a cinema and stuff um, just off the car park and he I think he just ran out of money at, at basically and, and couldn't complete the uh, the stadium so it was left and put a fence up for it um, which is unfortunate and for Oxford United they will never really move on it's fair they've done fantastically well the last couple of years obviously got promoted from the, the National League into League Two now they're in now they're you know Mark Appleton got them into to League One they're in and around the playoffs at the minute, lost out in the playoffs last season. They've done magnificent um, the last few years, but they can never, tr uh, they'll, they'll never truly move on or they, uh, the fans will never really, never really feel that that, that stadium's their own. You know, they want their own stadium. It's still owned by, you know, the previous owner. Um, there's always been haggling all over the last few years about ground, the ground and um, all that sort of stuff. So, for Oxford United to move on in their in in, in 
in you know in football. I think they need to, and hopefully, I think that's coming soon where they get a new ground and that you know fans then can start feel like it's their home a little bit and not just not just somewhere where they're renting, which they pretty much are at the moment. So hopefully, um, you know, they can move on. But I think I think that's a story. I don't just think he just ran out of money uh, and just couldn't complete the stadium. I mean, it almost seems like Oxford City have got the better better stadium, better better stadium and, and infrastructure around it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you know, Oxford City have got like three or, you know two or three feet, uh, three Gs out now. They've got the one yeah. on the stand. They've got obviously the one uh, in this great little setup there. They've done really really well um, uh, for themselves, and uh, I think Oxford United use their facilities as well. Mm. You know, Oxford United have. I've only just got their own kind of training ground. So they've been battling for years to get their own training ground. You know, they still haven't got their own ground. So they need to obviously, you know, better their infrastructure infrastructure if they want to move on, you know, in the in the footballing world. And, you know, they, their aim is to get into the championship. I think they need to do all that. Um, you know, but Oxford City have, have, have built a really, really good football club. Yeah. There and, um, you know, they probably bring a lot of money in from... From them resources of the, 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 the you know the multiple because they're always used as well the multiple three Gs. Yeah. How did you how did you get into uh, into coaching then first 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 of all? Um, so I played for four years at Oxford United. Um, I had a lot of injuries. I had I had seven or eight operations on my hips, groins. Um, you know there, there was one stage where I went for a, like a another sort of scan. MRI scan and I just like pressed the button I said I'm done I, I'm fed up of this kind of thing um, you know taking tablets for games and whatever just to get through I'd, I'd, I'd kind of had enough um, of that really um, you know I would have still play. I still tried to I still wanted to play Michael Appleton um, come to me sort of at the end you know my contract was up in the summer about two months before the end of the season uh, came to me and just said look um, you know we're Medically, I don't think we can offer you a contract at the end of the season. You know, I think I doubt you'd probably get anywhere else. You know, with with your sort of recent history with injuries and operations and stuff. Um, he said one thing you did say. He said, but I really want to keep you around. I, you know, you're, a, you know, you, something in around the sort of in, in keep you in and around the football club because you know he, he wants that type of person around, which is great. Uh, so come the end of the season. Um, you know, fortunately, lost the sort of 18s job uh, came about the youth team, youth team coach uh, under 18. So, um, you know, I I kind of gone from playing, stayed at the football club and sort of coaching there under 18s. Um, I hadn't really thought about it to be perfectly honest. You know, I was just so solely focused on trying to get another year in playing, keep getting another year uh, in playing. I didn't really think about you know the, what I was going to do after. Um, Luckily enough, Michael Appleton was brilliant. He kept me on. And, uh, yeah, I went into under-18s coaching, did that, got me sort of badges, my UA for B in that summer, got me my A licence um, a year or two later. Uh, really, re- really enjoyed it. Um, probably after about a couple of years, I started getting a little bit probably itchy feet. Um, um, you know, obviously, a lot of players who I played with had left you know, so it was, it was like a new feel to the place. You know, a lot of new players, a lot of big time, big players like Kemar Roof, Lundstroms, who are now doing brilliant things for for Rangers. They were coming into the team. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really feel that connection with the first team there um, a lot. Uh, I just thought it was the right time for me to leave, so I left. Um, I, Colin Gordon at Kidderminster. So I played with John Eustace at uh, Country City. Um, you know, when I broke through. He was the manager at Kidderminster. You know, they were starting his 20, like an under 23s. Um, and, and usually wanted me in and around the first team as well. So I wanted to kind of get back into that first team environment. They were, obviously, they were full time. Um, I was doing the 23s for, for Kiddy. And then obviously, when first team games, I'd, I'd, I'd be sort of with the coaching staff, basically. Um, and that was a great experience looking, watching John Eustace close up. As I had done with Michael Appleton in, in you know, um, at Oxford, then I went into really getting to see what what John Hughes has done from day to day, uh, matches, all that sort of stuff. That was a great experience for me. But this, I, I think I'd had two years because I was still in the Oxford United bubble. I never really, and I would say agree, like obviously, not I lost anybody or anything. But like when when I'd retired, 
Um, you know, because I went straight into that job. I didn't really have time to think about it. Um, and around this time, sort of kidding me, it's the time where I went, I was like 23's first team coach. I had a bit of a wobble, really. I didn't really know what I was, what I wanted to do. Am I chasing things? Um, you know, you know, I just found it really difficult to come to terms with. I've, I've, I've retired now. I've got to do something else. Um, you know, obviously having more kids, stresses at home came a little bit more. Um, and it was a really tough time. So then, then I was only there for about seven or eight months. Even though I enjoyed it, I, for some reason, got itchy feet. Coventry City wanted an under-18s coach. And I just thought, a little bit like Oxford United, where, you know, I, I played there. I'd, you know, it was great. Where Every time I went to the ground, it was, oh, you know, all the fans were great to me. I just thought, you know, me scoring the last goal at Highfield Road, been there as an academy player, going back to Coventry City, the red carpet's going to be rolled out. You know, it's, this is going to be brilliant. Uh, I can enjoy it. Um, and it didn't really materialise, really. I didn't really enjoy it at all, going back to Coventry City. I wish I hadn't have gone back. Mm. Um, you know, I had great, great feelings of the football club. Um, you know, when I played, uh, I come through the academy, I played, I come into the first team, played in that, that era, it was great. Um, and then I've gone back a few years ago. It's a completely different football club. Um, like I said earlier, we lived at the training ground. Uh, we're on top of the first team players. We've seen what the first team players did. Um, it was brilliant, a great grounding for us. The academy are now separate to the first team. So the, the first team are kind of closed off. The, the, the academy players are like in their own little bubble. Uh, and they quite liked it where I, for me, um, you know, they didn't, they didn't, these under 18 and 16, 17 year olds didn't grasp what it what it took to be a professional football because they didn't know they they couldn't see them day in day out um and we, we they very rarely got to go and train or see the first team players up close and personal um so they you know they they were left at their own devices really and they didn't get that grounding jobs weren't you know they weren't the same jobs and chores we had to do you know you're not allowed to do that anymore um you have you know you have to you can't like my coaches are really aggressive and forthright and, you know, you have to go on your toes for everything. Whereas, you know, whereas nowadays you have to be careful what you say. There's a certain type of coaching. Um, I'm still old school, I'm afraid. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you've got, you've got um, you know, a certain, they want to bring a certain type of player into the football club. They want to bring you a certain type of playing. And I just couldn't get, I, 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 you know, I, I'll hold my hands at the time. I just couldn't get my hand, hand, head around um, it just wasn't wasn't what I want was I was about. I couldn't just fall into some you know like just be a yes man and do what people wanted me to do and just go through that day to day. I gave my opinion, and and sometimes I wanted that opinion to be taken in, and it never was. It was kind of batted away. This is how we. I hate that saying. This is what we've always done. We'll keep doing this. Um, you know that they they've, they got some good players, like really good players through the system. James Madison's and. And and um, you know players players like that you know fantastic but you know you have to keep evolving for me at the time you, you know I just I, I didn't see it you know because it was separate as well whenever I went back to the first team training ground before you know when you get that feel of a football club where people are saying hello to you you know that time you know I went back and no one no one had said a word it felt alien to me whereas 15 years ago you know it was such a vibrant happy place. Uh, what I can remember anyway, and it's gone, it, it just wasn't the same place. Maybe that's me because obviously what, what we had back then was a completely different to what it is now. Um, you know, I, I just didn't get that same feeling I, I thought I was, was going to get going back. Um, and, and, you know, I, 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 I thought then that I needed to get back into sort of um, first team football, first team environment where... So Andy, I mean, according to this, then I'm sort of just sort of wrapping up and time's yeah. flying by on us. But I mean, you know, you, you moved in then from you know it went to sort of Kidderminster and was the under twenty threes coach there at, uh, at Kidderminster. Then with your old mate Russell Slade again at uh, in National League uh, North Club uh, Hereford. Um, but I mean, bring it right up to date, and and of course we, we, with Banbury. And I mean, how how did the Banbury job, you know, first come about? And uh, you know, and uh, well, it's just. Well, I'm hoping it's probably going to be that situation where it's above your wildest dreams of where you've got to this season and, and promotion into the National League next year. 
Yeah, I went, obviously I went to Hereford, Russell Slade, brilliant. Um, didn't work out there, you know, I don't, again, the club weren't, you know, as in board level, um, wasn't great. Um, and, and we kind of let, we, we left there, but I, I learned so much from there. And I, the last four or five years, I've, I've, I've probably been applying for jobs, managers jobs, um, hoping to get somewhere, but I was never ready. Um, and then Tim Harris, I think one day during COVID or just after sort of the main bit of COVID, um, Bamber United jobs up. Do you, do you fancy it? Yeah. Um, do you fan? What about why don't you put your CV in for that? I was like, yeah. Well, you know, obviously with my Oxford United links, it's it's, it's Oxfordshire. Um, you know, that could be a really good one just to get my foot in the door uh, and get in there. Really, uh, applied for the job. Um, had a few sort of. Uh, interviews over the phone uh, with board members and whatever, um, and then thankfully I was I was offered the job. You know, I, even yesterday I read some comments about um, a lot of fans were underwhelmed at the time getting me uh, in there because I wasn't approving. I, I literally seen these comments yesterday; they popped up somewhere. Um, you know, which is fine. I, I get that uh, unproven manager. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. You know, you got to get your experience somewhere. Somewhere under 18s managers get league one clubs they go from 18 to straight so so you know i don't sometimes i i, I have to cop out really this the experience one but uh, i felt i was ready um it was kind of in that that season obviously curtailed it was this was in may of of uh 2020 i think it was uh, 2020 so covid had just kind of um you know we'd been in lockdown we're just coming out of lockdown um we didn't really know when the when the the, the season was going to start. I couldn't really get into the club. I couldn't really meet players, which was just frustrating. Um, then we could kind of go into pre-season, but like in dribs and drabs. Uh, so I kind of had like meetings with players. Then obviously I didn't really know the players. I know a few who had worked with at Oxford United and stuff. Um, so it was just trying to see what see what I had I had in the building really, and trying to like feel my way into sort of the management world because. Yes, I wasn't an unproven manager. I hadn't had that experience. I'd seen a lot of it from afar, but I didn't. I weren't really in the thick of it and speaking to players and all that sort of stuff, bringing staff in and and what whatever else. Um, so that first season was brilliant for me in terms of. Yes, it got cut short with COVID. We played thirteen games, but it, it gave me a sense of I knew the league. I started to know the league. Then I knew the players. What I thought I needed, um, even in terms of backroom staff. Um, I remember once I was taking a training session, there's about four or five of them chatting behind me. Um, you know, just chatting, there's balls flying everywhere, and I've, I haven't got a ball because I'm, I'm in the session, and these are chatting behind me. And just little things like that, I was just, I was constantly sort of um, trying to improve things all the, all the time. Um, the first season, bringing in players was literally like throw a net out, hopefully, we catch a few uh, and bring those, those type of players in because it was like free for all. There was, league starting three or four weeks after another league so you know they were trialing elsewhere because they were hanging on to that when we'd already started our league and it was it was a mismatch for season even though even then we still managed to meet reach the, the first round of the FA Cup for the first time in in 50 years which was unbelievable achievement um you know for us so we still managed to do that uh but then through Covid then we had a lot of Zoom meetings like this and discussed it was you know I, 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 we get this just because we're, we're top of the league and we we're 20 points clear or 19 points clear. Everyone thinks we've got loads of money uh, and we're throwing money at. We've probably got a, a budget that is probably, I'd say, mid table budget. Uh, if you look at our budget now, there's a lot, loads of teams higher budget than us. Um, but what we knew that before the start of the season, we knew we weren't going to have the highest budget. But how can we sort of bridge the gap? Um, you know, so recruitment had to be right. The type of players I wanted, young, fit, hungry, players who wanted to go into the next level, um, wanting to improve. Uh, the staff had to be the same, they had to buy into it. So we had three or four new members of staff, uh, fitness coach, new physio, sort of new, new assistant manager, all bought into the same uh, philosophy. Uh, budgets, you know, I was like a salesman sort of last summer in terms of trying to sell the project really, because I, kn I knew... These players could go to another club and be third or fourth choice striker on more money. Or so I, I had to be really clever in in sort of you know this is what I think we're going to do. And I, and we just finished seventeenth in the league. Obviously it was Catal and we only played seven games. So it was 
you know, they, these, they had to see this kind of vision. Obviously, you get lucky with certain individuals as well. Um, as a player, we, we brought a player in on 50 quid a, a week, three days before the start of the season because he had nowhere. Uh, he turned out to be absolutely unbelievable and he's one of our, you know, better, best players now. You know, little things like that. So you have to have a little, little bit of luck along the way, but our recruitment and our what we do behind the scenes, we kind of, we've got, you know, a, a sort of mid-table to probably top half budget, I'd say, top eight, maybe. Um, you know, but we the little things you do, we sort of have pre-match at hotel, which isn't... Ex- which isn't really expensive if you look at if you look at it. Uh, so we get the players in three or four hours before the game, and even little things like training's different. We, have, we we stay after training, we eat or whatever, beans on toast or cereals or whatever. But at least they, you know, they let the players are chatting to a really good group. Um, we've we've managed to kind of have a consistent team over the last year. You know, if there's injuries or suspensions, we kind of. Our fitness coach, who retired five years ago, he's played three or four games, um, you know, just because we've had to. We've been real, really tight-knit. Players we've brought, hit, brought in, a couple of lone players here and there, but we've kept a kind of consistent squad um, together. And it's been, it's been an unbelievable season. To get to the first round of the FA Cup again, to play Barrow in front of 2,500 fans on, on, on ITV, a great achievement again. Uh, and then to go on... Um, and be champions with four or five games to go. Still 19 points clear with three games to go. He's um, an unbelievable achievement. One, probably the club would never have thought that we would we would be at at this stage. You know, we, we've we've got that mentality, that step two mentality. We said that at the start of the season. Let's let's like act as if we are a step two club, uh, and we've done that. Uh, and then you know we've got you know obviously even even more so now. It's you know because I think there's a bigger jump from. From where we are now to sort of National League North or South, it's, it's quite a big jump. You know, the club have to go again and we have to see how can we improve things without kind of breaking the bank, so to speak. So, you know, it, it's been a great journey. You know, it's only the start, really. Hopefully the club have now got to sort of stabilise, um, you know, in step two. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're really excited about it. Well, I, 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 I bet you're hoping that Brackley don't get promoted aren't you, for the big derby next season. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it'd be great for us. You know, they're 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 obviously doing really, really well. You know, yeah. they've been nearly there, haven't they? The last four yeah. or five seasons have been losing in playoffs. Uh, they've been top of the league and just just fall, falling short every year. Um, but they've they've been great, been pretty relentless so far this season. So, um, you know, a selfish point of view, it's a local one. You know, there's Gates and I think there's the other one, which is quite a long way away from from Banbury. Um, so yeah, local derby against Brackley would be fantastic. You know, we'll see how they get on in, at the end of the season. But um, you know, the, the club and the community, the town is so excited. You know, you see where the numbers were getting at, you know, eighteen hundred the other week. Um, yeah, it's time with it. On Monday, we should probably get near two thousand, probably plus. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really exciting times for the football club, and um, you know, they, but it's exciting. But there's so much look, hard work, to, and we've. So to try just to try and stay in that league next season, uh, I've been to watch games already, and it's a real, real relentless sort of hundred mile an hour league. Um, you know, we want to try and keep as much as a squad as possible. We know they're going to get offers from elsewhere. Like, um, you know, and want to try and progress their careers, which is fine. Um, so, but we want to try and keep as many as those, if not all of them, together, and 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 obviously add add three or four, but. Um, it's going to be a tough few, few months for us, but we're one we're looking forward to anyway. Well, I certainly am anyway. Well, listen, Andy, I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Yeah. It really has. I mean, I've just looked over there and it's a wow. We've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. Oh. It's been an, it's been Football, an I can talk now. I do apologise. No, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been an honour to have you on as well, mate, as well. And uh, we wish you and Banbury all the very, very best for the rest of this season and continue your run and, of course, into next year as well. And uh, we hope that uh, you have a great season uh, next year. We wish you and the family as well all the best as well. And uh, as well, and, and a massive thank you for joining me and Steve today. I've really learned a lot and really enjoyed the uh, really enjoyed the chat and hopefully we'll get to see you at the award ceremony on the 11th of June and uh, in person. But uh, from me and Steve uh, on this uh, chat with, of course, Andy, we'd say a massive thank you for watching uh, and we'll be back with our next chat. And our next chat should be Mr. Mark Morsley, ex-Needham Market and Leaston Manager 
as well uh, next week. So uh, until then, massive thanks for watching. Uh, and from me and Steve and from Andy, uh, good night.